So, I came uptown. We're on 42nd Street, steps off of 6th Avenue, and I'm wearing my fancy jacket and a nice shirt because this restaurant's great. Opened up a year ago, got three stars from the New York Times. It's restaurant Gabriel Freite, named after the chef. He's Alsatian. You might know him from the Modern, where he was before this for years. He got three stars at the Modern, really made his name in New York City. The food's unbelievable, and it's the kind of cooking that's really technical. These guys are really doing great work. Ambitious cooking, the kind of cooking that, is, I don't want to say it's fell out of fashion, but it's not the casual fine dining stuff that we've been covering a lot. These guys are point on. So, a day in the kitchen with this guy. Lunch, dinner, the pastry chef, the whole shooting match. That's today's show. Stay tuned. It's a good one. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line designed for preparing meals at home. I'm Alsatian, I grew up in Alsace on a farm. And as I grew up on that farm, I spent much, much more time with my mother in the kitchen. Six, seven years old, I was making cookies, that is, little that cake. Early. Yeah, I, I always, always wanted to be involved with food. And I remember my grandfather always asking me, what do you want to be? And I always wanted to be a chef. So chef, we're going to make sea trout? We're going to make the cured Tasmanian sea trout tartare. So what's been done to this so far? That has been cured with salt, with salt and sugar and uh, lemon. Oh, sure. good for about six hours, and then uh, we season it with chives, a little bit shallots. And here we have a peas, bichoc and peel, pancetta, trout eggs, and a little bit mint. And the peas are just peeled, shell, blanched? Peeled, shell, blanched, exactly. Okay, pea foam. Pea foam. And then we have all the little stuff here. A little lemon, lime. Again, acid. Yeah. This is Fried prosciutto fish. chips. Dill. Yeah, a little bit of dill. A little chip of bread, okay, yeah. just for the crunch. Just egg yolk. Egg yolk. Nasturtium blossoms. Daisies, nasturtiums. It's like a, a play on spring. Then we have a little bit of radishes. Color and crunch. Color and crunch, yeah. A little bit dill oil. So here we have it. And that's going to be served then, and at the table, they're going to finish it with, we call it horseradish snow. It's horseradish juice with a little bit of cream in it, and we do it kind of like a granite almost. So and it's cold, crunchy, cold, icy, crunchy, another and the spicy, texture component, yeah. and spiciness. And, the spiciness the and you see yeah. horseradish a lot in Alsace. In Alsace, it's really a staple of Alsace. Chef, describe this to me as you're putting it together. It's a halibut, and it's sitting on top of a celery puree with chopped hen of the woods in it. And here we have pickled hen of the woods and roasted hen of the, hen of the woods for the, for the, the, the differences in, in, in taste and balance. And here you have the sauce. Cockles, shrimps, wine, a wine sauce basically, right? Riesling? Riesling. This is a, a huge favorite of the people yeah. right now. I had a lot of people in my family that were part of the food world. I had an uncle who owned the hotel restaurant in the mountains. I had another one who owned the pastry shop. I have a third one that was a butcher in butchery. Then my grandfather on my mother's side, he had a goose farm, foie gras farm, basically. Yeah. So I grew up in that world of cooking, in that world of still slaughtering pigs at home. In the, I grew up with that, making sausages, making all that stuff. Through history, when you go to the best cooking in Italy, in France, the best, best, best cooking all stems from farm people, from very poor backgrounds. That's the sturgeon and caviar uh, tart. 
so Tarchel with sauerkraut, smoked sturgeon, muslin on the top and caviar, and then we smoke it under the wine glass. Applewood smoke. Applewood, Applewood yeah. smoke, yeah. Clients are always asking for sauerkraut here. Why do you, don't you do sauerkraut? Why don't you have that? You alsatian, we want a sauerkraut. It's like, so it's like, how can I come up with a dish right, that's that includes the most basic sauerkraut and brings it to a different level so that it's surprising and good? And I came up with that one with sauerkraut in a tart shell topped with, we did it ourselves, home smoked uh, sturgeon and then finished with uh, muslin on the top and caviar. So we have a dish that is at the base of the most basic thing from the farmer and one of the highest elevated ingredient in the world. I came up with that wine glass upside down and smoking it because the, 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 the fish is smoked. So there's something is happening. When you, when you eat, I believe that you you have the eye, you have the smell, you have the taste. So it, 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 we achieved with that dish, we achieved of getting attention from the people when it comes to the table, having that smell, and then when they go into it, they like, wow, you know, it's it's a couple bites, it's a couple ingredients. It's but delicious, it's, perfect. It sings in your mouth. Interesting you have a caviar section of the menu. Why that choice? Yeah, I mean, caviar is a luxury item. Right. It's, it's a rare item and it's an expensive item. But it's on the menu because I believe that people who go out and want to have a great time, if it's for an anniversary, it's for a birthday, it can be a special evening. If I have a special moment, I want to start with caviar and a glass of champagne. So we offer that. I love caviar, mm. I love uh, I love truffles, I love foie gras. <laughs> so I love these things. Champagne. <laughs> champagne, so I love that stuff. If you have caviar, you have to have foie gras. You have to have foie gras. I'm, I'm, of, I'm from the region where, you know, probably people eat the most foie gras in whole France. It's literally part of our DNA. So very little fat in the pan, just hot black steel pan, put yeah. the foie in and let, us, let it sit. Yeah. Usually I put a drop of fat, sometimes not. I like to add a little, a little piece of, uh, a little bit grease to start them. That way it doesn't burn right away. So we're gonna put it a little bit in the oven. You know, when I grew up, we had foie gras maybe twice a year. So it's something that you were looking forward to. You had it maybe on Easter and maybe at the first of the year. Mm. Perfect. Salt, cracked black pepper. I found with the onions and with the basil especially that the nutmeg is a great flavor. So then we're gonna plate it. Chive blossoms, marigold flowers. We have the onions. And they're just wilted down. Just wilted down with a little bit of lemon juice and pepper. There's this pickled green strawberries. A little bit foie fat. Foie gras fat? Yeah. And it's uh, a little bit of the pickling liquid of the strawberries, basically. So here we go, I'm gonna put the sauce, half and half, and basil leaves brought together in a pot up to a boil with a little bit salt, and then just blended in a vita prep and cooled down very fast. Pastro chinois, that's the base of the sauce. You can smell the basil, super yeah. fresh from here. That's, that's great, Chef. Really, really, really good. Through my whole process in my whole career, my goal was always to one day open my own place. Right. Everyone, I think it's everyone's And I think everybody who's going into that business, it's either being the, being the, the chef or trying to open your own place. You're going three, right? That was always my goal. When you create a new place, then you need to be patient to make things work. You have to create a team. There's a lot of things at the beginning that you start from scratch, need to happen, and it takes time. It's uh, the beef tenderloin. We marinate it in a little red wine for about 20 to 30 minutes. Roast it, standard, butter, thyme, garlic. Off to the side is a cab's head cannelloni, and we, we basically gratiné it with a standard Gruyere Mornay. And then we have some romaine that lightens it up a little bit, just shocked in ice water to make it extra crispy, with Parmesan breadcrumbs, a little anchovy dressing. The puree is kohlrabi, so we have pickled pieces of kohlrabi too to cut through all the richness of everything. There's a few other guys in this team that you guys yeah. have worked together for it connected for a while, right? A very long time. We all feel good working around each other. We believe in each other and we like working together. So as soon as Chef was leaving, the natural progression was like, you know, we all went to the modern to work for him. So if he was leaving, we want to find out where he's going. Kind of how it works. Yeah. 
I mean, so. most of them you're working for the chef, not the brand. Exactly. Not the address. Yeah. Whatever. The brand just happened to be good, but we were all yeah. there for the chef. There's a, there's a trust, there's understanding. It's so difficult to put a team together that works. You know, and uh, there's so many intricate parts. We all know each other from, from before, and we share the same passion of the restaurant business. So it makes it easier in a way. Chef, what is that? That is a small meringue we do uh, uh, with a fresh um, raspberry uh, puree. And your pastry chef's great. He was with you at, at the Modania. Super talented. His family had his own pastry shop in France, so he really grew up in that business. My father was a pastry chef. Ah. When I, I was nine, I want to cook. <laughs> Every day I never consider he's a job. But what are you making here? What do we have here? Donc, what is uh, this little... This is a white chocolate mousse. So it's a fresh puree. Where'd you get this moldy thing, this design? We, Where buy, this... we buy it. Alors, the first one I, I, I got when I was young was from a radiator. A radiator? Yeah, I worked with something very heavy. It was a piece of radiator. Man, got it this way and that way. That's a twill. I take white chocolate, pistachio, and the meringue, and I say I'm going to invent a new texture. Donc, I just add the three together and... And roll it. And roll it. Yeah, and it's got that beautiful sheen to it, too, huh? It's visual first. Yeah, it's very visual. A small vanilla stick, our marmalade of bergamot, and all the dish has been created around the, the bergamot. The kitchen roll use all the time this flour, and I feel it was nice. And I say I want to have a dessert like a beautiful lady dessert. And we call that um, fleur du temps. Lord de Ton. Imagine if you need to turn that by hand. You need a third hand. <laughs> First of all, how did you find this? On eBay? Uh, this one, no, across the street. You bought this across the street? Across the street and Fifth Avenue. So retro looking. It looks like it's from the 1950s. Yes. I mean, it's, a, it's got speakers built in. It's a portable record player. I was two solutions. Oh, I have. I move by my hand. Next time I give you my cell number, I've got some old turntables at home that I can give you for free. I got some, I, I collect vinyl, I've got all, they don't have styluses, but I'll give them to you for free. You'll let me know next time, I'll drive one up. So you can see his passion. Yeah, yeah. He's just old school guy. He loves, he loves to make chocolates. You, you need to know it's a three day proceed. Three day. Okay, here she's unmolding like uh, three days of work for you. This is the, this is the last day. Donc it's uh, natural colors with butter cacao. And the shine's gorgeous. I mean, the color, the, the temper. Because of the butter cacao. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, look at that. Just, those white ones are crazy. It looks like a little mini, like macaroon, right? It's a macaroon. The color has a meaning. It's a meaning of what you're going to get inside. Mm. The white one with the yellow, the yellow meaning the pineapple is inside. The white meaning the coconuts. And first you sell with your eyes. But the follow-up is the test, and the most important is the test. We do this one uh, for New York. The first things you see in New York is a pretzel stand everywhere, and this is like the street, the street chocolate. We have the cassis ja jam, peanut butter ganache, and then a pretzel crunch. You're gonna cut one open for us. There we go, there was a crunch in there. Hello. To do that pretzel biscuit, this is New York for me. We have a very good connection um, with what we do. You don't see a big gap between the savory and the dessert. It keeps going at the same level, at the same tone, you know. You know, the Kuglov is uh, like the, the grandpa of the Baba. The, the shape is a traditional form from, uh, from Alsace. Same mold, same look. And the, and the mold is uh, what makes the Kuglov. If we start from the beginning, you do a roll. You have some flour. And uh, with uh, your elbow, you go, <laughs> you press, you make a hole, you turn, take a mold butter. In general, when you go on the sweet side, you stick a, a sliver red almond. Right. And bingo. Bingo. So this is a larger format of the Kugelhof. So delicious. With miso scallions, super airy, super light, super delicious, baked fresh to order all day long. And this is this, this really simple. It's not exactly a butter, it's like a fromage blanc. It's a, like a cheese spread. So just break off, dip. And that's what greets the customer. Warm, delicious, sets the tone. That's beautiful. One of the, the best things working for Chef is he likes giving people ownership. 
if he sees you working hard for him, then it's, and you just go up to him, Chef, I want to do this, Chef, I want to do that, and he goes, yeah, let's, let's figure me. it out, let's try it. Show me the dish. Yeah, exactly, do the work, and we'll see if it works out. He's got like a two-hand thing going. See that, like the right hand and the left hand thing going? That's like, this is really old school. Got the old turntable, the two-hand spinning thing, a cork, but I'll tell you what, that looks great. We found the name of the, the dish, and we named Decadence. Decadence. Decadent. Because it's okay. really decadent. Okay. It's butter everywhere, it's rich everywhere. Our first support is um, lemon verbena meringue. And we start to fill up with our creme brulee. Uh, chocolate mousse with an answer of uh, blackberry on the middle. And what's the color on the top? Just, just a puree? It's a gelée, gelée. with a pectin okay. of blackberry. Right. Some gold leaf. Just, Why not? Just to, uh, to give some more decadence. What is that? A small stick of um, Sam, butter, sugar, and filo dough. The filo dough uh, caramelized on the top. I don't even want to get near this stuff. I'm going to knock something over or break something. or What is this called? The fudge twill. I call it's that the fudge, fudge twill. And you try to fit that between. You look good? It looks insane. You look good. Some blackberry to remember fresh. I believe we need always uh, to see some fresh fruit, and I love fresh fruit around the plate. Some lime lemon sugar, just lime lemon, and uh, from here. yep, just very uh, flavorful, just for the color, and give a little bit of acidity to the to the dish. Up, chocolate sorbet. Et voilà. Voilà. Gorgeous, man. What can you say? That's gorgeous. So you're French. I'm from you're from Rouen. Yes. Which Rouen. is famous for Trois Right? It's hard to it's Rouen. It's like the Rouen. But that great restaurant. Which people confuse it Rouen sometimes in the north of France, but it's Rouen. It's in the center of France. Center of France it used to be famous for making lace. Yes. Years ago. Yes. I know this. Wow. Why no French trivia? Impressive. Um, the glassware. How many types of glasses do you have at this restaurant? We have about almost like 10. We have smaller, six ounce, three ounce burgundies, Bordeaux, beer, And cider. these I've never seen. Who makes this glass? So those are made in Champagne by Gerard Lehmann. Uh, and I love the different shape here that allows the wine to kind of expand a little bit differently. Yeah. And it's really good for swirling, and as we'll see in a minute. really comfortable. Yeah, I love that. All right. So let's drink some wine. This just arrived in the country a few weeks ago. It's his new 2015 Pulsar Old Vine. I mean, look at the color of this. Look at that color. Genius. Oh my God, and you look at this color. I mean, this could, I've seen rosés darker than this. It's unfine, unfiltered, super expressive as well, um, as natural as it gets, biodynamic. He converted the estate in 92. Any SO2 a bottle? Like two milligrams, three milligrams, a little bit of soft dioxide? Just a little bit of SO2 bottle. before bottling. Right. That's it. Sometimes it's a little funky when it comes out. You need, you'll decant it. But also, Jura, it's funny to mention, just like Alsace and maybe Cotroines, these are regions that are finally being appreciated today. Clean, non-interventionist wine making. God, this is delicious. Floral. Super, Super floral on the nose. I was trying to, like, trying to look for words for Hibiscus. That. Okay. Rose, I think I can smell petal. hibiscus. They drink a lot of pulsar and Jura with desserts also. Hmm. I mean, I love it. Fish, meat, cheese. Cheese, yeah. cheese, cheese. Desserts, strawberry tart, cherry tart. Emily, thanks so, so much. You're very York's welcome. Glad uh, you came and decided to get serious about wine. Thank you very much. Salute. Cheers. How did this spot come up? Because this sat vacant for a long time. So I, I went to, on the quest of looking many, many, many spots. I was always working in Midtown, and this is kind of the edge of Midtown. So I was, you know, comfortable in being in that area. I loved the fact that there is a park across right. the street. Right. Uh, nobody's gonna put a building on the top of the park, and you know, and the subways, double traffic, everything was there to make a good destination place. I loved the fact also that we had nice big windows and the daylight. And the ceiling, I mean, this is a double and height. the height of the ceiling. Right. The Great double space. height of the ceiling. So when I saw that, I, my, my vision was that I can do something beautiful in here. When I decided to open this place, everybody around me just told me, go with your roots, do the story of your life. 
So that's why you have the beams in the dining room. The beams are original beams from Vermont, from an old barn from the 1860s that we reclaimed. So it's beautiful and it's reminiscent of the houses in Alsace. The lamps are a copy of the street lights around the church in my little town. 1,200 people live in the town. We have also a, a chandelier with crystal stalks, yeah? With the bird, it's the national, the national bird from that region. Everybody was talking about how many should we put up? Ah, da. I said, what's the address here? 41 West, 42nd Street. I said, why we don't just 41 up there? <laughs> so that's what we did. The entrance door, when you come in, the handle, that's late 19th century, original horse bridle from Alsace. I have the pots and pans that I did my apprenticeship with from my uncle, that he had from his own uncle. So it's like some of those pots are like 100 years old. All those little things are reminiscent of my heritage. Appetizer, a foie terrine, a dorade, and a salad. No dairy on a salad. Here you have a Hawaiian, a Hawaiian sea bass that is uh, roasted uh, with uh, succotash, chorizo, and a chorizo uh, emulsion. And then there's has a corn crumble on the top. Always a little thyme, always a little bit something for flavor, not just bona Can you describe this to me? It's an uh, Australian lamb rack. And we rub it in a spice mixture of star anise, chili, a little bit of coffee. And we roast it like a tuna, so it's still rare. And then we brush it with a little bit of a coffee oil. And then when it goes out table side, we actually have a little vinaigrette with a little bit more coffee oil and saba. And saba is the, uh, the must from the balsamic. On top, it's just fresh ingredients, avocado, husk cherries, and a little bit of radish. People that don't get how heavy a lift and opening is, oh. right? Oh. Like, like, like seven Let's days see. a week for five, six weeks leading up no sleeping, 18 hour day kind of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's non-stop, it really is non-stop. And it's the most crucial at the first year too because that yeah. it's really make or break. There's yeah. no real recovery from that. You were training staff on the floor. Every single day you're doing that. How to present the food, how to carry the plate, that every day. Every day, half an hour before the shift opens, we do mock service and mock training, curve balls, because when it's the service, it's not training time, it's, it's, it's show time. So you have to be ready for that. These days when you open, you better have your game right day uh, one. Especially working with a pedigree of Chef Gabriel himself. So, I mean, people expect a lot and we have to deliver. Cool. Right, so the chef, frog leg dish that you do in advance, put in the mason jar, then finish it the pickup. All I do here is just sweat the mushrooms. Chanterelles. Yeah, chanterelles. Here I have fresh onions. Now I'm gonna put the shallots in. Now I'm gonna add a little bit Alsatian white wine. Just a touch. Now I'm gonna put this in the fridge to completely cool it down before we put it together. Now we're gonna cook the frog legs. I get them from Florida. Fresh from Florida. Fresh from Florida. That's crazy, right? Yeah, Everglades. Everglades, they're great, they're amazing. Now I'm gonna put the garlic in. The garlic, gonna sweat with the frog legs. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter now. And then the same idea as the mushroom. We're gonna put it in a fridge to cool it down. The onions are just swept down with a little bit uh, grapeseed oil and uh, salt, a little bit pepper. Those gonna go in the bottom of the jar. They're gonna develop nice flavor with the, uh, with the mushrooms and the, and the frog legs. A nice pool full of mushrooms. Now we have the frog legs. The nice thing is that everything is deboned on those, so you just eat it together. Now we have the fava beans, blanched, peeled. Those are the green, the greens from the onion. Scallion. It's definitely spring, huh? Yeah. What I have here is all the bones from the from the from the frog legs. Right, because you bone them out. We did a, a jus with it, a, a fumé, and reduced it completely down to get an extraction of flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit in it. Not too much because it's very flav it's very strong, very flavorful. And now a little bit sherry. And then we close them. We're gonna cook them for about 20 minutes in a steam oven. So here you're gonna have Florida frog legs with chanterelle mushrooms, fava beans, spring onions, all cooked together with a little bit garlic. When it comes out and we serve it, we serve it with a potato foam and some puffed grains at the end on the top. And now we're gonna finish it with parsley root, 
form puffed farro and truffles. And then when you eat it, just eat it with a spoon and go all the way down. Mix it kind of like deep yeah. down and have all the flavors together. Thank you very much. It's like a little nod to farm cooking. Anywhere I walked, I always kind of walked the way, like taking ownership, you know? I think when somebody asks you what makes somebody successful, when somebody is successful, I think it's, it's when you take it with passion, with pride, and you take sense of ownership in it. You run it like it was yours. And that, I think that makes the biggest difference in the world. Really ambitious menu, really nice to see you guys firing on this kind of drive, this kind of precision, and again, this kind of ambition. You know, at a time when it's, everything's getting casual and dumbed down, it's nice to see people like holding up for, for technique and quality. So thanks so much for having us in today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for Thank coming you, in. Man. Thank pleasure, you, man. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.